This is Demrix, Jamie Madge Rock. And then it's your man's Obi Trice. This is Adlib. Yo, what up? This is Specs One. This is Fresh K. Hot Rock's the motherfucking Scrat MC. Breaking Records. Breaking Records Radio out here. This is Breaking Records Radio. Check them out, man. Um, and that's actually something else I wanted to ask you, too, because me personally, Primo, uh, he's my favorite producer of all time. And um, I still yeah, haven't, yeah. I still haven't got the chance to interview him, but it's coming, it's coming. Um, but yeah, I, I, like I'm a Primo fanatic. So um, one thing I was kind of wondering too is like, how did you and Primo initially link up? Like, was Golden Child the first joint you guys did? Uh, for me, solo, definitely. I don't know. I, I feel like maybe I'm out. Was fucking around on something before, but he knew me before I had a record deal. Oh. He knew me through Wino and Coolio. So oh, I was, I was like a young boy. Yeah, so I, Wino and Coolio. Um, Wino was Coolio's producer. Wino was my big homie from my neighborhood. You know, Triple OG. Um, and uh, Wino would bring me out. They just bring us out. Like was, you know, he believed in me. And uh, you know, when Coolio did as well. So I mean, I, I remember being premiere, um, like, yeah, shit, like probably 1995. Oh, shit. Like yeah. So then, um, then I got my deal. So I was able, and, and, and honestly, what you call it would be, uh, like, Guru was always like, like a cool big brother, man. And like, when I go to the city, like, cause I had my deal and then I was traveling on my, independently, I wasn't always going with wine on them anymore. And, uh, um, yeah, I went through all whatever, you know, I probably, actually, I probably met Premier in 94. Something like that, whatever. Um, him and, him and Guru. Oh, shit. Um, but, um, yeah, man. Yeah, so he's on me. And then I finally had my deal. And I was like, man, you know, this is my bucket list. Like, yo, I, got, I need you. I need you. He's super, super, you know, he, his waiting list is ridiculous. So, um, I, he's I, like, I, yo, I got that. you. I got you. And then, um. I, no, my budget was fucked up. So I, I was like, I'm going to get you next time because I'm really, you know, it's my bucket list. And then second album, I have my money together. He's like, yo, it's going to take a minute. I got this, 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 this. I'm already committed to it. I'm like, I totally get it. And then um, it didn't happen. But I had the Dre shit. My whole thing was like premiere and Dre on the album. Like, who, nobody had done that. I'm yeah, like, no. I remember you saying that in actually the Vlad interview that you did too, that you wanted to, didn't you initially say you wanted to get the whole album produced by those two? Well, my goal was to at least have them work together on one track. Yeah. At least. I didn't have no budget, like, to, to pre create that. But if I was, I, my whole thing was, if I could get them to, to sit in, and be, I'd be the first. I mean, I, they've done it since now. <laughs> yeah, because they did it on Games Joint. Yeah. So, yeah. So, you yeah, know, it was like my idea. I put it in the universe, and then, you know, oh, boy, fucking reap the benefits. But, um... <laughs> Yeah, but uh, no, I uh, I finally had my budget and was ahead of the curve and got my booking in and he was ready to go to town. So I finally told go to town was the first time we actually officially did something for me. But I feel like I would be in a studio with like MOP and Bumpy Knuckles and and fucking Guru and I would like do a little hook thing or some shit. And, either didn't make it or whatever but I would be around a lot I would be at d, &D when I was in town and go you know kick it period so you would have been there during like someone like the and they always show me a lot of love especially me being an outsider from LA like yeah cream and guru all of them they just always show me super love oh man that's dope and um so what that would have been what for um cause you were supposed to put together the golden child album right and then the label uh ended up uh shelving it yeah, yeah, that that was like two thousand and one. And then so that so that's what Golden Child initially would have been for, right? Because the only version I've ever been able to find is that K Slay mixtape version. Like I've never found a clean version of that joint. Of the Golden Child? Yeah. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, we made we even made vinyl because it was supposed to be the first street single. We were supposed to even shoot a uh, like a small budget video for it. Yeah. Um. My undoing was that they found out that I had a Dr. Dre record again, and then they completely reversed course and decided to to, to wage my life over the, uh, Dr. Dre again. And Dre was in my corner, um, which was, he heard the whole album. He's like, this 
premiere shit is dope as fuck. And then I had, I had a, you know, I had a, uh, had a uh, Scott Storch record that was crazy, and I had a high tech record that was crazy. You even um, had a Kanye so, record on okay. there, didn't you? What happened? What? You even had a Kanye record on there, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, Kanye record too. Yeah, I had, a, I had a dope Kanye record. So um, that, we didn't really see that as a single record. It was a dope ass record. It could have been. It was dope. It, it reminded me of like Jay Z's "All I Need," the, the type of production oh, that he shit. did. But it was super dope. But we had a plan about how we were gonna market the record, and then the company found out that I had a Dr. Dre record and it turned into groupies and reverse course and that's how, how the whole fight started. And then because we couldn't get Dr. Dre to clear the record without me clearing the record because they hadn't paid for it it was just like he was doing the bless me um they couldn't force me to put the record out um because they hadn't paid for it it was literally a favor yeah and then um they decided they wouldn't put my album out because they were mad at me for for for, for me holding them accountable for the plan that we had to market it was really a blessing and it was a curse that it was a blessing that was a curse like yeah. honestly it was a gift and a curse for me um it's crazy like with all these amazing records obviously they're they're they were just being groupies because they didn't give a fuck about the Kanye record. But yeah. I didn't have a Kanye record. Um, you know, whatever, I had my own record that Scott Storch did. Scott's blowing up. I had this dope-ass high-tech record with me and Pharaoh. Oh, man. I had a great album. Um, you know, uh, later, and while I was incarcerated, Paul Rosenberg would even write me and tell me, you know, how much, he, you know, the record was holding up. He wrote me in, like, 2004. Like, the other time was really... It's still a dope ass record. Like you really killed this record. Oh, but man. my company just didn't have a vision. They they just didn't have a vision and they decided to to destroy my career and my record. Um, because they couldn't get Dr. Dre to be the first single when we had already agreed on the single and we had already pressed the final on the Golden Bell, which was the single. So it was just whack. Just you know, corporate whacking. Oh man. And then that's what led you to you were in an eight year lawsuit with them after that to get out of the deal too, right? Yeah, that was, yeah, that, yeah, yep. Oh, man. Shit, do you still have, like, do you still have those joints, or are, are all those masters, like, owned by, do the, does the label got all that no, shit? No, I have, I have the majority of them. Um, I, my A&R, who actually, the, the one who who leaked and let them finally hear the Dr. Dre record, he has the Kanye record, um, um, initially he was going to give it to me and then all of a sudden he got very stingy about it which I don't, you know, at the end of the day if he tries to put it out you know, if, even if I die he's got to pay my kids, I don't really know what that's about, but whatever, people are weirdos yeah. um, but yeah, so that's the only one I don't have is the Kanye record, which it was dope and I wish I could get it, I might reach back out to him and see if he's interested in <laughs> let me have it because I, uh, what I like doing is, you know kind of putting out you know the older stuff it's just content and at least you get a you get you get a window of where my brain was at and the, well, I do I get a window of, it's a time capsule for me to see oh this is where I was at and then there's certain songs that didn't make the album so it's kind of nowadays you know I can show you like well, we were working on these two and this kind of almost was going to be the album, so you kind of see behind the scenes type shit. Yeah. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do Golden Child that way. Um, probably, probably in 2019. If not, it'll be 2020. Ah. So that'll probably be in Yeah. Dope, dope. Because that's actually what I was going to follow up and ask is if you ever planned on releasing any of the material if you had it. But that's dope. That's real dope. Yeah, yeah. Nah, I'm definitely going to do it. It'd be great to have a Kanye record. And then I just, I just got. Uh, the files for um, some records me and Battle Cap were working on, like oh. the reels. Uh, my homegirl had them. I forgot. So my homegirl got these reels of these songs that me and Cat were working. So if I get the shelter behind the scenes. Like I'm just gonna mix them and leave them as is, or maybe if there's no hook or put a hook on them. But I get I haven't even heard them yet. I just know what's on the reels. I vaguely kind of remember the song. So. You know, it, it's a journey. It's just like, like I said, it, it becomes these. Uh, you know, it's kind of like when you go look at an old picture. Like, oh god, I was. We were doing this when that happened, and then yeah. you're like, oh, I had on a blue shirt, and then you look at the picture, and you're like, oh no, I didn't. I had on an orange shirt, I had a stupid haircut. You know, whatever. <laughs> so I get to look back and, you know, go, you know, kind of, kind of enjoy the journey. You know, the time capsule. So now I'm definitely gonna do it. Oh man, that's dope! I can't wait to hear some of that stuff. 
Yo, what's up? It's your man, MLNY Maloney, Breaking Records, Breaking Records Radio. You know what it is. I'm just here to tell you guys right now that you want to, if any of my smokers out there, basically, any of my Canadian smokers, now that it's legal, what you got to do is you got to head over to thccollection.com and check them out and make sure you use the promo code HIP HOP. That's H I P H O P, and that's all capital letters. Save 10% on every purchase that you make. Anytime they got everything, they got deals every single day of the week, which include like free whatever with whatever you buy. And uh, my favorite is Tulip Tuesday. You can get one hundred dollar ounces, and that's only on Tuesdays. And you save ten percent on every purchase with the promo code Hip Hop, all caps. That's H I P H O P. So make sure you go over there, check them out. That's thccollection.com for all your good medical needs, for all your good. Gr- greenery, your extracts, and all that good stuff.